Hey friends, welcome to another video. Hope you guys caught my last video where I was talking about my DKNY fragrances, giving a little mini review of the brand and just five fragrances from them that I picked up. If you haven't checked that out, go have a look. And if you guys haven't heard, I am on TikTok and on Instagram now under the same name. So if you want just some short, funny videos, go check me out there. And for today's video, I hope that this is gonna be fun. You guys are gonna have to tell me if you like this because what I wanted to do is I have a ton of samples of niche fragrances and I just wanted to go through the samples and tell you if they're full bottle worthy or not. I am personally pretty novice when it comes to niche fragrances. They're very expensive, as you guys I'm sure know, and sometimes it can be a little intimidating to go and drop $300, $400, $500 $400 on one bottle when I know I can turn around and get like 30 cheapies and be just as excited, if not way more excited, than getting one. That's just me. I'm a maximalist and I'm not apologetic about it. So, um, I definitely think that there are some that are amazing quality, um, remain to be seen if they're worth the price, but I'll at least let you know if I think the scent is full bottle worthy. So let's get started. So the first one that I'm gonna have a look at, which I haven't actually smelled, so you guys will get my authentic reaction, is Commodity Gold. So I believe that this is how it works with Commodity. They have the scent, they have the regular version, then they have one that's more of an intimate bubble, version, which is a minus, and then one that is um, their intense version, which is a plus sign. So I have all three of them, but I'm just going to have a look at regular commodity gold. Okay, so right off the bat, I get a really nice amber vanilla scent. Smells like there's like a little bit of vetiver in there, maybe, that gives it a little bit of um, earthy tone. And it seems to have like a nice muskiness to it. Yeah, I like this. I like this a lot, actually. This is um, definitely along the scent profile of things that I like to gravitate towards. I like um, slightly sweet vanillic fragrances. I don't like them very, very syrupy sweet. I just don't like that scent profile at all. But this has a nice light sweetness. It's a, a simple amber vanilla fragrance. Do I think it's terribly unique? I don't. I think that there's probably something that you could get for a less expensive price point, but if we're throwing that all to the side, we're not focused on that, is this full bottle worthy in my opinion? I would say yes. So the next one I have is Bois d'Ebony, which is by Matière Primaire. Sorry about my pronunciation. My French isn't great. <laughs> Ooh, okay, this is significantly more interesting than the last one. The other one was just, you know, nice, but um, a little basic. But this one, ooh, this has a really, this is very woody. This definitely borders on the more masculine side, although it's something that I would wear, but I like unisex fragrances. It's got a little bit of smokiness. There's, there's something distinctly a little green about it that uh, I can't put my finger on. Um, it might be cypress oil, but I need to look up the notes. Um, but yeah, it's, I could tell that this is very natural smelling, very, very natural. Um, it would fare well in colder weather because it's a very woody, very strong, powerful fragrance. I could see this, um, being too masculine for a lot of women, but I think it's very sexy, very sexy. There's a slight bit of smokiness, but I don't think there's incense in it. It's not like that. I think that's just coming from the type of wood. And it's a very dry fragrance. There's not a lot of sweetness. And I would say that this one is definitely full, full bottle worthy. Yeah, ooh, this one's good. Next up, we have Incense Suave. And this is from the same house, Matière Primaire. So let's get a little spray. Okay, so this is significantly sweeter than the last one, but it's not a sweet fragrance. But the very first thing that you get is incense. It's a very, it smells like a burning incense. Almost like if you're burning copal resin. It almost smells church-like, 
which um, I don't want you to think like dusty church, bad perfume. I'm talking like cathedral, um, almost like ceremony is going on. And it's got a little bit of benzoin in there to give it some roundness. And again, I believe that this one is unisex, leaning masculine, probably not as masculine as the last one. And I'm just like, if you like a true incense, you're going to smell like burning copal. This is it. Like th this is super full bottle worthy. And I did wear this and I wore it with Lalabo Hinoki body cream. And that was the most beautiful scent combination ever. And it's definitely, again, probably gonna be not something that a lot of like super girly individuals and super feminine individuals would go for, but it's commanding and it's sexy and it smells like a, like a nice hotel. Yeah, so luxurious. This one is a like super yes, super duper yes. Next up, we have Tonka Imperial from Guerlain. Okay, so this one is even sweeter than the last one. I get a powderiness from this. I definitely get an almond, like a, like a bitter almond, not super sweet. I, I, I think I get a little bit of incense in this one, but I don't know if that's my nose deceiving me from having just smelled encensoir. And obviously this is gonna have tonka bean in it. And it almost has like a, like a little bit of a tobacco-y, I don't know, maybe I'm tripping. Hold on, let me look that up. Yes, yes. And it also has jasmine, Was I, I wasn't really picking up on. Um, this is nice. This is a maybe for me. I think it smells good, but I think that there's a sweetness in the tonka. I'm not sure what the sweetness is coming from, but mixed with the powderiness, sometimes sweet powdery scents um, don't fare well with me. Now I want you to keep in mind, this would not be sweet for most people, but it is for me just because things tend to go super sweet on my skin. I don't know why that is. Um, but yeah, I could see this one being a little bit too powdery. I think it's nice. I think this is something my husband would like. So this is something that I probably wouldn't wear. It's Tonka almond and powder and I wouldn't want a full bottle, but I think that my husband would wear it. The next sample that I have is Whiff of a Waffle Cone by Imaginary Authors. So the notes in this one, you've got syrup, ice cream, whipped cream, caramel, vanilla, amorous, cinnamon, and the only thing I smell out of this damn fragrance is syrup. Just smells like maple syrup, that's it. That's all I get. I don't get any of those beautiful creamy notes. No, I just get pure syrup, and I may maybe I get a little whipped cream in there, a little bit. But this is reminiscent of a Bath and Body Works, what's the um, really syrupy one? Pecan waffle or something like that. It's very reminiscent, it's almost like a niche version of that fragrance, and for that reason, it's too linear for me, and it's way too gourmand for me. And I don't like sweet syrupy fragrances to begin with, so no, this is a hard pass for me. I don't, I would not wanna smell this close to food. I wanna smell, um, you know, sometimes you want a little bit of like edible quality in there, but no, this is like too, like you smell like you took maple syrup and rubbed it on you. And that's just not, and, and to pay that amount of money, you know, like niche, I mean, Imaginary Authors is a little bit uh, more affordable than some, but like, I don't know, why would you pay a niche price to smell like this? Just not, not into it. The next one I have is High Frequency by Initio. So this one is a rather simple fragrance, but this is floral with a little almond. It's interesting because upon first sniff, I like it. I like it, I think it smells good. I know for a fact that Inicio performs really, really well. They ought to because they're expensive, right? Um, I don't know what floral it is in here, but when I smell a little deeper into it, it's almost got a slightly pissy thing going on. 
And there's some white florals to me that smell a little bit like urine. Like they actually smell like urine. Like I live in Los Angeles and sorry to get graphic, but like, you know, unfortunately we've got a lot of folks living in the street and they have to go to the bathroom somewhere, right? And on a hot day, Sorry, sorry, sorry. Like we're all sitting here for like good fragrance descriptors. You didn't know you were gonna get that one today, right? But it's, it's messed up to say because I like this fragrance, but do, does anyone else get that? Like when there's certain white florals that you smell it and you're like, what is that? I don't know. So high frequency for me is gonna be a maybe. I would have to wear it on skin to see if that note dissipates or if it's increased on my skin. And if it's increased, obviously, it's gonna be a, a pass. Next up, we have Rosé All Day by Gallagher. Okay, so in this one, I'm definitely getting like apple and honey. It's definitely got like a distinctly honey note to it. I think it's got some rose in there. And I'm just gonna say off the bat that I don't think that this is the profile that I would go for. I could see this every now and again in fall with it being honey, apple, maybe like like maybe a little tonka in there. So it's got a little bit of rich depth. So I could see that faring well in fall with like the changing of the leaves and harvesting apples and making pie. It kind of smells like a like an apple pie. Yeah, that's that's the perfect descriptor. It smells like an apple pie. Again, this is along the lines of imaginary authors where I don't want to smell like food um, and it smells a little bit too much like an apple pie or maybe like a warm apple cider, which I could see a lot of people loving that. Um, I could see why you would want a full bottle of this, but nah, not for me. Next we have Soir Exclusive by Nevitus. Okay, this is interesting. So this is almond and coffee but it has licorice and in some videos in the past I've said I hate licorice. I hate, I hate it. Um, it's one of those notes that's kind of like a non-negotiable for me. Although it's not terribly prominent in this, this is gonna be one of those fragrances that I would have to say it's heavily dependent if that were to come off on my skin or not. I think that the dry down in this would be nice because it's got, um, Tulu Balsam, Vanilla, Driftwood, Ambergris, Musk, Oak Moss. So it's got some nice deep undertones to it. I think it would dry down nicely. I would just have to get over the licorice, which is it's just really hard for me not to smell it. It's like a really pungent note, or this would not be worthy of a full bottle. Next up, I believe this is discontinued, but this is by Wilhelm, and this is 125th and Bloom. Okay, so this is quite a bit different from the other fragrances that I've been spraying. This one, upon first spray, it's very noticed that it's a leathery scent. It's very leathery, woody, with a, a little bit of rose, but almost like a green, bitter rose, like with the thorns, with the leaves, and like a little saffron. You can smell that like little burning tingle that saffron gives you. I think that this is one of the most unique out of all of them from today. I just think that, I think that the leathery for me is a little bit too heavy and I think it's a little too authentically leather chair. You know what I mean? I don't know if I'd wanna smell like a handbag. Um, is it interesting? It's interesting. It's very interesting. I think it would be a nice piece to have for layering maybe, but I just think that, especially because we're, I think, because we're in spring summer right now, this is just like too much for me. Next, we have BDK Tobacco Rose. So this kind of comes off exactly as you would imagine. It's a rosy scent. It's got a little bit of um, pepperiness in the beginning to give it a little bit of spiciness, but it's not cloying and it's not itchy and annoying. Obviously it's tobacco, but as I'm looking here, it says that it has Italian lemon and plum in the beginning, which it gives it a little bit of like brightness and a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of like a deep berry scent. This is a really lovely fragrance. The rose smells very velvety. It smells very rich without um, being, 
antique. It's really sweetened up in the beginning with those fruits. And it's got like a little bit of tobacco. And it's got a little bit of chocolate in there, but almost like a slight bitter chocolate. This smells like it could be a second cousin to Intense Cafe. Just a little bit, just there's like an essence of it, but I, I think this is significantly better blended. It smells much more natural and I really like this. Now this is the kind of depth that I'm talking about. The last one, 25th and Bloom, too leathery, too dark, um, just too much for me. But this one, this one is good. It's, it's really good for androgynous gals like me because it's got a sweetness yet a depth, a dark, a sexiness. So it's a really great balance and the rose is feminine but powerful. Um, yeah, this is beautiful, absolutely worth a full bottle. And last but not least, I have Guerlain Queer Beluga. So this is a very soft scent. I thought by looking at the notes here that this was going to be a lot heavier, but it's a very gentle, soft suede fragrance. It's got aldehydes off the top, which I can definitely smell, but don't let that um, intimidate you if you're not an aldehyde person. It's just like a, a light vanilla suede. I feel like this is one that I would go anosmic to because I'm even smelling it off of here. I can tell that it's strong, but I'm getting anosmic to it, which is not always... It, <laughs> of course, you want to smell it. You want to smell your fragrance, but also this is one that I feel like as you move around, people would smell it on you and they wouldn't necessarily think, oh, your fragrance is nice. I think that they would be like, oh my God, your skin smells really clean. Like you're just like a really good smelling person. It's got a nice little bit of powderiness to it. So it's like vanilla, suede, powdery, little amber, but it's, don't let that fool you. It's not a deep scent. It's not a dark scent, it's light. I like this and I think that this is full bottle worthy. So as you guys can see, I have a bunch that I think are full bottle worthy, a few that I'm just really not into for my personal taste. I don't think any of them are particularly bad. Um, there was only one um, that I didn't even show here and it was the most pungent and dolic tuberose I've ever smelled in my life and it really smelled like piss. So I threw it away. I straight up, I don't even remember what brand it was. It didn't even make it on here. It was gross. No, absolutely not. So let me know if you guys enjoyed this kind of video. Um, I'm just, you know, trying to see, I'm trying to build my catalog. I can go out, I can buy a bunch of cheapies and, you know, not feel bad about it, return them to the store if I want, whatever. But like, when you're really investing in niche fragrances, sometimes you gotta go the sample route. You always have to go the sample route. Like blind buying a $200 plus fragrance just blows my mind unless you like really, really stand by the notes, you know that you're gonna love them. Um, but even then, sometimes you'll be surprised. You'll see notes that look incredible and perfect and like you would really like them and then you're so disappointed. Like for example, I just sold my Montal Tropical Wood. The notes in that looked exactly like something I would wear. Citrusy, woody, musky, oody. And then I got it and I was like, oh, hell no. You smell like urinal cake and toilet bowl cleaner. No, no, dirty bathroom, dirty bathroom. So once again, check me out on TikTok and on Instagram. Make sure that you guys, if you're constantly coming back to my page and you're not subscribed yet, I'm almost to 700. Ah, I'm almost to 700 followers. I'm so excited. Um, the growth on the channel has been steady, uh, but you know, if you enjoy these, just double check that you're subscribing because, okay, I'm gonna be like thoroughly honest here. The sooner I can monetize, the sooner I can get some higher quality fragrances to test for you guys so that way I can do like giveaways. I wanna do giveaways, I wanna do fun stuff. Like I want to be able to take the money from that and not just spend it on me, but spend it on the channel. I'm not trying to make the money because I need the money. I'm trying to make the money so that way we can have like better quality content here to enjoy together. Like I want to do cool things for you guys, but God knows 
fragrance is like burning my money right now. So double check that you're subscribed and tune in to my next video and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.